there is one thing that you don't have anymore in an electric Jeep, and this is the engine. But there are certain functions that require the engine. The brake assist and the power steering both rely on the engine in order to operate correctly. And of course, we have to change the way we're going to accelerate the vehicle. So what are you doing for that in an EV conversion? Here's a hint. Our system is going to be a bit of a Frankenstein. Welcome back everybody to our EV conversion project. About a year ago, we purchased... What? <laughs> I'm sorry, the mosquito was going to bite you. <laughs> About a year ago, we purchased this 99 Jeep Wrangler. And since then, we took it all apart and we are preparing it for its new life. An electric life. Do you remember when we had this Jeep in the garage and we started to disassemble everything? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, it was a crazy adventure. And we always wanted to look in the instruction manual to figure out exactly how to take it apart. On power steering equipped vehicles, unbolt the power steering pump. See, we were in our garage, super tiny space. It was winter time, it was cold. First, we had to drain all the fluids out. So we had to remove the engine oil, all the coolant systems. That was a big mess. Battery gone, radiator gone, drive belt gone, cooling system gone, cooling liquid gone. And then finally, on New Year's Eve, we got the engine, the transmission, out from underneath the vehicle. Today is the day. The engine will be removed today. December 31st, 2021. Last thing we do in this year is removing the engine. Okay. It only took a little bit more work than we thought. At some point in time, we got it to a stage where we couldn't even recognize that this is a Jeep anymore. It's completely naked. So we decided that, hey, it was best to really gut the whole thing, including the interior, pull all the wire harnesses out and basically start from scratch. Now we're at the point that we need to implement three key functions of our electric Jeep. Acceleration, braking and power steering. We'll talk about how all that used to work in the old Jeep and what we're doing now for the EV conversion, how to mount it, and also how to electrically connect it to our vehicle control unit. First topic is acceleration. The original gas pedal, or now the electron pedal. So how did this work in our original Jeep? So originally we had a gas pedal like this, which we all know and love, and in here you have a cable that's connected. So this is inside of the cabin. And then inside of the engine compartment, this cable then opens up the throttle body, which then injects air and fuel into the engine, and that's how we go. In an electric vehicle, you have to electronically control the power in the inverter that's going to the electric motor, and you don't need a cable. So we have a completely different way of controlling the acceleration. So why don't we go over and see how we're doing it in our electric Jeep. So this is a go paddle from a Nissan Leaf. Instead of pulling a cable when you step on it, it has a position sensor. So of course it's supposed to pick up how much acceleration you want. And the VCU, so the vehicle control unit, reads the position of your pedal with a sensor. It will turn it into a value between zero and 100%. So zero is off and 100% is full throttle. So of course we needed a new go pedal for our electric Jeep. We first looked at the Nissan Leaf pedal, but we also looked at a Tesla pedal. And the Tesla pedal was just much easier to mount from a mechanical standpoint, so we went with the Tesla pedal. It fits our Jeep better. Yeah. So what you can see here is the Tesla pedal mounted right against the firewall, whereas for the Nissan pedal, we would have really needed to build a bracket because of those side mounts. Every pedal is a little bit different, and you can calibrate your pedal in the AEM calibration software. Should we do that now? Let's do it. So what you have to do is, of course, um, figure out the pinouts of your pedal and then also see where that goes into your vehicle control unit. And once you have that connected, you go into this acceleration pedal area here and then you can start calibrating. So what we can see is it's not calibrated right now. So in the closed throttle position, it's reading 50%. And when she presses on the throttle, it goes to 0%, so we have to fix the calibration. So for safety aspects, there's always two position sensors in the throttle pedal. This gives you two values that the VCU knows so that it can assure that it's a proper throttle position before it goes. So we can set here for the sensors the minimum and the maximum voltage that the pedal position corresponds to. So now we need to set the high limit. Go full throttle. Okay, that's 4.6 volts 
for the first sensor. Okay. So now what we see is 0% is closed, 100% is full throttle. This is where we'll be most of the time. Yeah. This is how you calibrate your acceleration pedal for an electric conversion with AEM. Super easy. Second topic we're talking about is braking. So how does power braking work with gas powered cars? So power braking works in gas powered cars by when you push on this brake pedal, you push on a lever that's inside of this mechanism. This mechanism operates on the vacuum that the engine produces and it gives you a power assist for when you're braking. Of course, without an engine, you don't have the air intake which is producing the vacuum and so you have to replace this with a different mechanism in an electric vehicle. Now let's go take a look and see how we're doing that in our electric Jeep. For braking in our electric Jeep, we're using an electric brake booster. What it does, it replaces the vacuum assist with an electric motor. The first option we looked into is reusing the brake booster from a Nissan LEAF. The challenge with the Nissan LEAF brake boosting system is it relies on an external capacitor that's mounted behind the back seat as an additional power source and communication. And we couldn't get it to work without diving deep into the communication protocol. So we decided to change gears and move to a Tesla brake booster. Made in Poland. This is a Tesla eye booster. Let me show you where it goes. So this is where we mount it. We can mount it at the stock location. We just needed to drill some new holes to fit this pattern here. This is where it goes. And then we can just connect the stock brake lines to the brake booster. So while we're using the Tesla brake booster, we are not using the Tesla brake pedal because it is just way too long for our tiny Jeep. Okay. Instead, we're just reusing our original Jeep brake pedal. Perfect. Third and last topic in this video is power steering. It's not doing it yet, <laughs> but very soon. How does power steering work? with a gas powered car. So of course you need to have power steering, especially in these off-road conditions. You have a power steering pump that is on the belt of the front end accessory drive off of the engine. This then feeds power steering fluid into the rack, which helps you steer the Jeep down the road. Of course, without an internal combustion engine, you have to replace this power steering pump with something else. Let's see how we're doing it in our electric Jeep. So there's three main options that people do for EV conversions for power steering. One of them is replacing the entire steering column with something that has a built-in electric motor for this. The second thing is to just use an electric pump to use the stock power steering system. The third way is to replace the entire power steering pump with an electric one. So initially we thought about the first option of adding the power assist to the steering column, but with a lot of the off-roading we wanted to do, we were a bit concerned about putting all of that load through the shaft. So we ended up going with option three. So we ordered a Volvo power steering pump off of eBay and we had it delivered and we mounted it into the Jeep. So it uses an electric motor instead of being driven from the engine. And then this gives the hydraulic fluid the assist that it needs during steering. The nice thing about this option is we can use the stock steering rack from the Jeep so we get all of the off-road performance from a stock Jeep. This is where we will connect the power steering input and output from the power steering pump into the stock rack. Another nice benefit of this system is once we figure out how to communicate it to the VCU, we can actually feed it vehicle speed and have speed sensitive steering. So that's it about acceleration, braking and power steering. Next things that we're working on is mounting, well, building the front battery box, filling it with our battery modules, hooking it up with the AEM BMS. Stay tuned for some upcoming videos about the cooling and heating system. And then finally, we're gonna mount the battery box in the Jeep. Bye.